we need to do for Israel what the world did for South Africa. Hello, my name is Stanley Heller. Welcome to The Struggle. With all the attention to the Turkish invasion in northern Syria, we must remember that millions of Syrians in Idlib are being bombed by Russian and Assad forces. This attack is in the city of Jisra Shahur. This video from the White Helmets. This rescue is from several months ago, a bombing of a marketplace and neighborhood that killed 32 people. Now to the area being fought over by the Turkish army and the Syrian SDF. This is SDF resistance in Tiltamir. Oh, God. 
Her nom de guerre, Seren Gunas. She was a medical student. She left Turkey four years ago to join the armed organization DKP, Revolutionary Communards Party, in its defense of the Syria Rojava region in alliance with the Kurdish led SDF. She took part in the battles from Manbij and Raqqa that crippled ISIS in Syria. During 2017, she was chosen to become the commander of the International Freedom Battalion, a united front of Turkish leftist groups and international volunteers from outside the Middle East. Her birth name was Ozge Aden. She was reported killed in action on November 3rd, also in Tiltamir, northern Syria. Now from the climate activist group, 350. Exxon New, make them pay. Exxon New, make them pay. Exxon New, make them pay. We're here today in front of the New York County Supreme Court, and inside there's a trial going on, and it's the state of New York versus Exxon Mobil. So this is a liability lawsuit suing Exxon Mobil for essentially defrauding its shareholders because they systemically lied and covered up the true impacts that they knew decades ago about climate change. Um, and that obviously has impacted the price of their share. The reason we're here today and so excited about this is because it's the first of what will hopefully be a flood of lawsuits and other sorts of liability actions um, to hold big oil fiscally and legally liable for the destruction that they have knowingly caused. So just over the past week or so that this trial has been going on, we've already seen other states and counties announcing that they will hold similar legal actions. So Maui County actually just announced that they intend to sue big oil for liability as well. The state of Massachusetts just announced that they too will launch a lawsuit. We saw Big Oil testify in Congress. Rex Tillerson was inside this very building testifying just a few days ago. Um, so we have the youth strikers with us today. This is actually the same exact spot that the September 20th, one of the largest climate strikes ever, started and took place. So we're back today to continue to escalate this call that big polluters need to pay for the destruction that they have knowingly wrought. Um, and we hope that this will just be the first in a growing wave of liability actions. The magic of 350 is to be able to change the lives of lots of people socially and environmentally economically speaking. Because of 350, I have met the love of my life. So this is one incredible moment that I will be forever grateful for 350. And the second moment, it was a moment that we were going to, to a field visit in an oil spill in Rio de Janeiro. So we were going with the fishermen to check the area of the oil spill uh, in the river, in the Guanabara Bay, around mangroves. And the people from Petrobras, which is the oil company in Brazil, were not letting us in to check how everything was. But with the fishermen, we managed to get uh, by the river. We crossed a uh, border by boat and we dropped, we jumped to the river and we entered into the mangrove and we managed to get inside and register, take lots of photos and we were able to put all these images and all our, our questions to say that Petrobras, the company, they were lying because the spill, the oil spill was still going on, it was not solved and the amount that was leaking was way higher than actually they were informing us. Uh, my hope for 350 for our future as an organization as we that we can continue doing this amazing job in the whole world. Student-led climate strikes are coming up on Fridays, November 29th and December 6th. In Connecticut, the big target has to be an attempt to cancel the fracked gas plant being planned for Killingly. 
Connecticut opened fracked gas plants in 2018 and another this year just a few months ago. If we can't stop the explosion of carbon into the air, then all the new solar and wind energy is meaningless. This is PEP's carbon clock, the days, hours, and seconds until 2030 when we have our first deadline, a cut of 50% in carbon emissions. Connecticut's Governor Lamont needs to declare a climate emergency and to come up with a plan of cutbacks and efficiencies to allow the Killingly plant to be canceled without penalty. Now speaking at the Tree of Life Conference on Palestine in Hartford, Connecticut, Mark Braverman. Mark uh, is the author of Fatal Embrace, Christians, Jews, and the Search for Peace in the Holy Land, and A Wall in Jerusalem, Hope, Healing, and the Struggle for Justice in Israel and Palestine. Please welcome Mr. Mark Braverman. I was in Bethlehem, uh, maybe, maybe it was five years ago, I was at the Lutheran Guest House in, Beth in Bejala, and um, a lot of uh, American uh, church groups come through. And this was a Lutheran group, I think, from, uh, from Wisconsin, and they had their bishop with them. And he was going to see Palestine for the first time. And I saw him in the morning, and they introduced me to him, and, uh, and I said, where are you going? He said, well, we're going to Hebron. I said, I want to see you when you get back from Hebron to later today. And I did. He came back, and the man's face, he was white as a sheet. He had been to Hebron. And I said, well, tell me, what did you see? He said, well, we, we went to the, the settlers, uh, you know, uh, outpost, the settler community inside of Hebron. And you know how that works in Hebron. It's a city of 150,000 people. You heard a wonderful, wonderful presentation about Hebron. It's a big, vibrant city. And it is being held captive. All those people are being held captive by about 600 settlers that are protected by a garrison of Israeli soldiers. And they're right in the middle of the city. And they've established themselves. And they're saying, we are the, we are the settlers. We are the real, we have come back. Because Jews used to live in Hebron. My grandfather was born in Hebron, a Jew. He would be horrified by what's going on now. So he says, so we walked through the, the, the closed streets, the Shahada Street, the old marketplace, the marketplace which is now all shuttered up. It's a dead street now, which was once a, a live street. And we went into the, the, the little settler area, and I saw a big, big mural, a big banner, you know, as, as, as big as the stage, and it said, there is no Palestine, and there never will be. I said, Bishop, I'm glad you saw that, because you have now seen the real face of Israel and of Zionism. Don't let anyone tell you that these are crazy, fanatical settlers who represent some fringe element. I mean, they are crazy. They are fanatical. It is an ugly thing. But that represents the real face of Israel and what the Zionist movement is all about. It is about the erasure of Palestine. Now I ask you, after having been here tonight, has Palestine been erased? The whole Zionist movement is based on erasing the history, erasing the memory, erasing the culture. Has this culture been erased? This is resistance. What we see tonight is resistance. That much life, that much energy, that 15-year-old girl from Gaza, and the singers and the dancers that we're going to see. So it hasn't worked. I've just returned from a trip to Ireland. I was in Belfast now for the first time. Who here has, ever, who here has been to Belfast? Okay, it's a powerful, amazing place. And what I learned about Belfast is that, you know, it's a city divided into two. In the west, there's the Catholics, and in the, in, the, in the east, there's the Protestants. There's even a wall. 
that goes down the middle of the city. It blew my mind to see it. And I learned that it has nothing to do with Catholics and Protestants. It's not about religion. It's about the history of Northern Ireland, which is that colonial settlers from Scotland in the early 17th century came over and began to displace and dispossess the indigenous Gaelic Irish. And that's what this is all about, and it ain't over. And what's interesting is that Palestine figures very, very powerfully there, as it does in Brazil, where people are struggling for rights, as it does um, in South Africa, where people are struggling for rights. Palestine means a lot to a lot of people. And you can go to West Belfast, and you see the Palestinian flag flying, and you go to East Belfast, and you see the Israeli flag flying. It's pretty amazing. And those settlers from England who came over to occupy Northern Ireland considered themselves, and this is the word that they used, they were good Calvinists, the covenant people. Covenant people. God has chosen us, we are special, and God wants us to take this land. Sound familiar? We're sitting on it right now. My people, the Jewish people, feel like God, or the Bible, is, is a historical document and a deed to a land, and we have the right to do that. I was brought up on this. Now, the original Zionists were socialists from Russia. So they were officially atheistic, so they didn't believe in God and didn't believe in the Bible. But Ben-Gurion was no dummy. He named the place Israel so that people would confuse it and associate it with, with Israel and the Bible. And he famously said, God does not exist, and he promised us this land. That's the way it works. And it's, you know, it's still happening. So I'm sometimes asked, you know, people who are apologists for Israel, people who are concerned that... Uh, to be for Palestinian rights is to somehow be anti-Semitic. I just came from Germany. The Germans have a big complex about this. And I talk myself blue in the face and they still say, no, but we can't hurt the Jews. I say, this is not about loving the Jews. This is about loving human rights. But if you want to love the Jews and love us properly, like you would love your alcoholic uncle who's asking for another bottle and the keys to the car. Show us some tough love. Tell us we have to stop doing it. So people say, well, you shouldn't single out Israel. This is kind of anti-Semitic. You know, everybody hates the Jews. I say, this is, don't tell me that this state is my state. Before 1948, before the end of World War II, most of Judaism, official Jew, Jewish denominations were officially non-Zionist or anti-Zionist. So why would we want to associate our faith tradition with ethnic nationalism? So this is a big, big tragedy for the Jewish people, but that's not, you know, that's our problem. The people of the world, Jews, Muslims, Christians, people who identify with the faith tradition, we need to do for Israel what the world did for South Africa. We should boycott, sanctions, do our best, or do our worst to make Israel feel the pain so that that government ceases to be, and all the people of Palestine, Jews and Arabs, have a chance for a decent future. The world boycotted and sanctioned South Africa was an act of love. It liberated white and black from the poison that was poisoning their future and their children's future. That's what we need to be, so I'm with Craig on this. BDS is the best thing we have, and that's really what we need to focus on. Uh, and if people call you anti-Semitic, you know, wear it as a badge of honor and tell them, excuse me, I'm not anti-Semitic, that's racism, I am not a racist. And I heard it from a Jew, Zionism is not Judaism, and the State of Israel is not the Jewish people. The State of Israel is a sovereign state. <laughs> and we need to bring it back into the community of nations. I'll tell you one more story. I was in Ramallah. 
I was sitting with a woman named Lana Abu Hijla, our Palestinian friends. You know this name, you know this family, right? It's, a, it's an old Nablus family. Yes, and, Na, and, and Lana uh, is, she works, she is the head of, um, or was the head of uh, Mercy Corps in, 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 in the West Bank in Gaza. She lives in um, Sheikh Jarrah, in, in, in uh, East North Jerusalem, which is still not taken by Israel. And she commutes to Ramallah every day. It's about uh, f five miles north to south and then back south again. And she, as you travel along that road, if you've been on that road to Ramallah from Jerusalem, you know that the wall, the separation wall, the apartheid wall, the land stealing wall, runs along that entire road along the west side of the road. And one day her eight-year-old daughter, like children will sometimes do, just came out with something out of the blue. She said, Mom, why do they make the Jews live behind that wall? <laughs> now this child, and I'm thinking of Lala again, she did not know that she was the one who was supposed to be the prisoner of that wall and they were trying to, and was taking her land and taking away her rights. She knew who she was. She understood who were the true prisoners of that wall. Because that's what walls do. So the Palestinians are not being dispossessed. They are not being erased. The psychological and spiritual victims of that wall are the people who are doing the oppression. The Palestinians will get their freedom. Um, let's have that slide now, okay? I just want to add this to what, uh, to what uh, uh, Craig had to say about um, what to do. Um, these are just two websites. The one is go to the, go to the Tree of Life Educational Foundation website and learn about the activities and the educational programs and go to palestineportal.org, which is a program of Kairos USA, and you will find vast, deep uh, resources for education and training in your communities, in your mosques, in your churches, in your, in your local uh, peace movements. You will also get news about what is happening around the world in response to the Palestinian call for BDS and also the call of the Palestinian Christians for solidarity. That is the true meaning of solidarity and it's up to all of us. Thank you. We close with Palestinian music from Tamar al Sahuri, Nadine Shomali, and Albur Bassel. <laughs>
That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller for The Struggle.